I'm Josh Biggie, and this is uh, Michael Ross here from Criterion Barrels. We're going to do part one of the Accurizing the AR-15 video series that we're putting together. Uh, so what's the first part we're, we're doing here, Mike? Head spacing. Head spacing. It's vitally important, isn't it? Critical for ensuring that you're not going to get increased pressures within your chamber, and uh, basically for the overall function of your rifle. It definitely affects accuracy as well. Mm -hmm. So as far as head space goes, I mean, really what we're looking at on the cartridge is... The distance from the datum line on the shoulder to the uh, face of the bolt here correct and we'll have a little bit of close-up footage here showing which dimensions we're, we're talking about um, you really want to make sure it holds a very specific tolerance um, with i mean it's really determined by three different variables you have the the bolt face um, the barrel extension and the chamber itself and the barrel so all three of those have to be in sync um, so that's one thing we recommend for any shooters putting together their own rifle from mixed parts. Um, always going to want to check that over because I mean we we can regulate the specifications on the chamber and the extension, but when it comes to the bolt, that's something that we don't manufacture in house. Yeah, I mean we, with our barrels, we hold tolerances that are well within the SAMI spec. So our tolerances are, are very tight, but there are a lot of different variables when it comes to aftermarket bolts. You know, there are different mm -hmm. coatings and things like that that people apply to the bolt itself, which can really throw off that proper head spacing. So that's something that you want to ensure when you get your barrel in. You want to make sure that whatever bolt you're using is properly head spaced to your barrel. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, we do carry a number of uh, bolts in inventory that we can headspace for you. We offer it as a service typically through Brownells, or if you just call in at 262-628-8749, uh, uh, either Mike and I, we can headspace it in a jiffy, or we've got, uh, I think for the AR-15s, we have BCM bolts. On yeah, hand. BCM bolts have been proven mm -hmm. to be extremely reliable. I've used them in dozens of my own rifles and fired thousands upon thousands of rounds through them. I've never had any issues with the BCM bolts, so that's one of the reasons we have them here. They make a great product. Oh, yeah. That, and with the 308 ARs, typically we inventory uh, JP high-pressure bolts, which we usually recommend for folks running the... My personal favorites. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The 6.5 Creedmoors, it, it, it really works out well. And then we carry Fulton Armory headspace bolts, too. Correct. Um, so with the 308 ARs, it's... it's very essential that you had space here. It is. Barrels. And why, why is that, Mike? Well, 308 ARs are kind of, you know, they're in and of themselves something that's very different from the standard AR-15. Um, 308 ARs don't have the true mil spec like an AR-15 platform does. Yeah, mil spec is nice because then you can hold that specific tolerance. Everybody knows exactly. Exactly. Where but with the AR-10... Um, or the 308 AR. You know, the because 308 AR, right there, correct. Explain the difference. I mean, there's there's different patterns of 308 AR out there. Correct. You have your Knights Armaments. You've got your Armalite. You've got you know your DPMS pattern rifles. They all have different specs, and the parts that you put in them are not all cross compatible. So this is why we both spend a great deal of time mm -hmm. answering questions about people you know from people who are trying to build an AR-10 platform style rifle, um, and you know when they run into issues with cycling or. You know, lock time or something like that is generally because they're not using components that are truly cross compatible. So, so in a minute we're going to flash over to our armor Nick, and he's going to walk you through the whole process of disassembling the bolt and head spacing it to the barrel. Um, we've got a gauge here that's uh, kind of a, a cheat. It actually has um, we'll close up on that here quick uh, to show what it looks like, but it has a a hole milled into it so we can. Uh, just straight up install it here without taking the bolt apart, but that's kind of a, a, a trick that we put together to do. We had space a lot of barrels. Yeah, yeah, but if you're doing a onesie twosie kind of deal, personal rifle builds, then uh, disassembling the bolt is usually the easy, easiest way to do it. Um, so what we have here is a, a set of uh, go gauge and a no go gauge, and internally we typically hold the go gauge at 1.4646, and then the no go at 1.4676. On the high and the low side, which is well within the SAMI tolerances. I mean, typically with, with SAMI uh, on the tight end go gauge side, we're looking at 1.4636, and then on the field gauge, which is the, the extreme mm -hmm. safe, like anything further than that is unsafe. So you're going to want to be between 1.4636 that we mentioned and 1.4736. Correct. Uh, the no go gauges, which are generally recommended for new bolts and new barrels, will be well shorter than that field gauge, somewhere in between. Two numbers. Um, so really, if, if you just go to Brownells or go to any of the major retailers and look up AR-15, 223 rem, go and no-go gauge, that'll do the trick. 
Um, yeah, like, this is not something you need to be intimidated by. Yeah, it's just, like, by the gauge set, you'll be all right. It's very simple, yeah. and it's a simple way to ensure that your bolt is mating up with your barrel properly and that you're going to have a smooth running platform from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pan over to Nick here, and he's going to kind of walk you through the process of disassembling the bolt and uh, getting it to headspace properly. I mean, really, really it's, it's it's an essential process because... If, if you're running it too short, the rifle won't go into battery. If you're running too long, uh, you'll see popped primers, uh, case head separation, brass failure, and, and accuracy issues both ways. So Absolutely. really it's all about holding that tight tolerance and keeping everything nice and uniform. Again, generally with mil-spec AR-15s, you're not gonna experience too many bolts that don't headspace properly, mm -hmm. but it's something you definitely wanna verify when you get your new barrel in. Mm -hmm. All right, so Nick's taking a look at his gauges here, just making sure everything's specced out. And we've got here is a little uh, fixture we picked up from, uh, was it Yankee Hill Machine, I believe? Yeah, correct. I don't know, I couldn't find it online when I was looking, but uh, if you find a headspace gauge or bolt disassembly tool uh, on Brownells or you know Midway or any of the major distributors, you should be good to go. It can help streamline the process. Oh, yeah, yeah, it makes it nice and easy taking that bolt apart. I mean, you can jerry-rig it and do it like a home build, but uh, then you're gonna be, probably need three or four hands to get in there <laughs> to hold that, that round into place. All right, so the, the different dimensions that we're going to be measuring here is the datum line, uh, kind of on the shoulder of, of the case, and then we've got the, uh, the case head, right where the, uh, the bolt face meets up, and that's really the dimension that we're concerned with here. So what's Nick doing here, Mike? He's uh, removing the extractor so that he can easily uh, put the headspace gauge onto the top of the bolt face and he'll get an easy uh, read on the headspace in there. That'll make it nice and easy to get that, uh, that cartridge or the, the gauge in there rather than hanging up on the, the extractor or the ejector here. Right. And it looks like he's starting to begin work on, on removing that um, ejector as well by punching out those pins. So if you look on the side of an AR-15 bolt, you'll see two separate pins, mm -hmm. and both of those need to be removed if you're gonna get an accurate measurement. I mean, you can muscle it into place, but it's generally not preferred. You can get some false readings that way. And again, those pins are really easy to punch out as well. Check out Nick's wicked awesome tattoo. That's pretty, <laughs> pretty <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> the M14 and a M4, M4 or, or, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so now he's got his go gauge that he's pulling out here. And he's gonna mount that right into the bolt assembly. Now if we can get the camera angle there, he's gonna slide that right in and the bolt on top. And then basically he's going to twist it to make sure it's effectively going into battery. So if it turns freely, it's a go. Mm-hmm. You might need a little bit of resistance. That just means you're running a little on the tighter end of the spec, but as long as it turns, you, you should be all right. And there's nothing wrong with having a little bit tight spec there mm -hmm. either. So did he just pull out the uh, no-go gauge there? Yep, so now he's put in the no-go gauge, and you can see that the bolt will no longer turn freely. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's exactly what you want to see. It's not going on the no-go gauge. Yeah, you might see a little bit of wobble in there, but that's just the, the movement between the extension and the uh, the bolt, but it's, it's not sliding underneath those lugs and turning. Right, so you can see that whole process took just a matter of minutes, mm -hmm. and now he is ensured that that bolt and that barrel are properly headspaced. Yeah, yeah. the trickiest part is getting that bolt apart and back together. Uh, you want to make sure you don't, you know, narf up your, your roll pins, and we, we've all been there, but fortunately, you know, most of the time if you're a rifle builder, you keep one or two of the <laughs> extra parts in your <laughs> or a bin in my yeah or a so. bin yeah <laughs> so now he's gonna get that bolt put back together and uh then we should be home free on that front 